Hey folks, welcome back to Jerome Bee Farm and Homestead. So it is Friday, uh, September 17th, and man, we are in a severe dearth right now. It hadn't rained in central Oklahoma, I'd say over three weeks, and then the rain we did get uh, back then, it wasn't much. Uh, so things are super dry here. We should be in our fall flow right now, goldenrod's blooming, but it's dry. There's no, there's no nectar in the goldenrod. It's just a big yellow flower. <laughs> Uh, I suppose there's pollen in there, but there's no nectar going on. So the robbing is terrible right now. I can't open a hive to do anything. Uh, I've tried to do some, you know, quick little manipulations to do this or that. If you take a frame out of a hive for just a minute, I mean, it is like phew, they're all over you. I've seen severe robbing before, but man, this is... It's worse than anything I've ever seen. Uh, it's really crazy. Maybe it's because I have more bees now than I've had in the past, but uh, man, it is it is some intense uh, robbing situation. Uh, I had a, a little swarm uh, or a little hive I got. I did a cutout at the state fair in a lemonade stand. So I got them out of there, got them set up. Uh, they got robbed out the next day. Uh, so. I didn't have any honey in there or nothing, just, just their brood rubber banded in and I wasn't going to feed them until things got situated and, and settled down and, and boom, man, they had them, had them in probably that morning. But uh, they were robbed out, absconded up in a tree. It's a big long story. I, uh, I, I put them back in, they went back up, I sucked them down in a vacuum two days later, put them with the queen, moved them over by the old, uh, the, the new barn far away and uh they were doing good and they just got robbed again just now so i threw a blanket over it and hosed it all down so i don't know if they made it through this one or not those those poor bees from the state fair they just they just got a total uh, butt whooping uh, a bee butt whooping <laughs> ever since they got here they're like what did we do to deserve this so yeah it's been tough so there's no checking for mites there is no way I'm going to get a, a hive open, find a brood frame, you know, make sure the queen's not shake it, get to do all that, yada, yada, uh, and back together before it's a robbing frenzy. Just can't do it. Uh, and I'm not even going to try. <laughs> so uh, I've, I've treated all, so I, I've treated all my hives and I am continuing to feed the ones that have a hive top feeder. So it's pop the top in the evening, fill it up with my little, uh, uh, gas pump thing and shut the lid boom in and out and don't open the hive and that's been working uh, I'm not opening the hives that have frame feeders just can't do it. Uh, it it would be a frenzy so I've treated all my hives once uh, except these two right here so this video I'm going to show you god the mosquitoes this video right here is going to be uh, show you how I do my uh, mite treatments with my uh, Provape uh, 110 and uh, do these two right here and that, that'll be all of my hives treated for mites. The first treatment, so I'm gonna do at least three, seven days apart. So uh, the next two weekends we'll hit them. So uh, that's it. Uh, sorry it was such a long intro, but uh, let's get started. Okay, so these are hives 29 and 30. Uh, 29's on the left, the one in the back, and uh, it's got a hive top feeder. And 30 is one of our wildflower meadows queens uh, that we started this year, and they're doing really good. That's a really strong hive. I uh, didn't put a honey super on it, obviously, but uh, the other one, I did have uh, two supers on that, I believe, and uh, one one was full, but, uh, and we've harvested that. So let me run through the equipment real quick, what we got going on. So we got a... 2000 watt generator here and that's an inverter generator so it's one of the quiet type and uh, it's, it has an on-demand function so the engine doesn't run uh, wide open if you don't need that much but what I found for this uh, uh, heat source on this uh, ProVap that uh, I just go ahead and I turn that echo setting off and run it at the full RPM uh, something to do with that inductive load, I would I would assume. So uh, use a ProVape 110, oxavap.com if you want to go look that up. Uh, 110 
So yeah, it doesn't run off of 12 volts. And this is a little heater cup here. And I have three of the little ceramic cups and I'll show you how I stage them out and just uh, kind of do a assembly line, just keep moving down the line. It's pretty fast. So I have three of these. And I have these little wood, ah, these wood blocks. So I set these on the entrances. Uh, doesn't work for a nuke, but uh, for a full-size hive, it, it covers the entrance and leaves just a little bit open on a corner. So if there's any bees hanging out, they can still uh, get back in the hive. Before I do my treatments, I run down the back of each hive and uh, drill the hole out because sometimes they fill them with propolis and uh, or just general whatever. So uh, I just run it in and pull it out. So that gets it opened up. For some reason, this one has two holes. Like maybe that one wasn't any good. Uh, maybe too low. I should probably use this one. So yeah, I drill my holes in the bottom board and I actually angle it upwards a little bit. So if I run into the actual bottom board, it'll come on out the, the top and uh, not just be a dead end. So that's why I do that. Okay, and I have a 3M 5303, that's the large. A dual cartridge respirator and the 5303 is uh, rated for acid vapors so that's the one I use this is a disposable I think uh, I don't know I may be able to uh, put other cartridges in there I'm not sure but anyway that's the respirator I use and that's it so let's get set up and uh, I'll get my respirator on Get the bees off the front and blocked off, and uh, we will get them vaporized. Okay, let's get all of our garb on. So, uh, I always wear a sweatband because uh, I'm a big Olivia Newton John fan. So, there. Uh, so, this particular mask, uh, it has this part here that goes on the top of your head but I always put uh, the bottom on first and it has a little clippy thing like that so I always do that first it's easiest to put on that way and then when you're ready you just flip this up and, and bam just like that so uh, let's uh get our entrances blocked off and uh this is the absolute worst spot i have to video on in my whole bee yard but uh it's the two we need to get done so we're, we're gonna we're gonna give it a try so one thing i forgot to mention was the oxalic acid i use so you'll see me using this container i don't use this brand anymore i'm just using this container so i buy uh Florida Labs oxalic acid. It's like 98% pure. This stuff is not pure. If you just have one of those little uh, glow plug, little round cups that you put in with a little stick, this stuff's okay. But uh, if you use the vaporizer like I have that has the little tube, when this evaporates, it leaves a slag. And that slag dries hard as a rock and it plugs up it clogs up the tube and next time you go to use it it'll blow up in your face uh, it'll blow the cap off and it'll blow hot oxalic acid all in your face and I've done that so don't use this with this type of vaporizer so uh, your probate comes with a little scooper I think it's a half teaspoon yeah, it's a half teaspoon, so it's one of these scoops per deep. 
and I usually do some pretty heaping uh, scoops when I use it so but uh, that's what it looks like it's just white uh, powder so the term vaporizer technically is not correct it's really a sublimer because you go from solid to gas and that's called sublimation probably going to start a forest fire as dry as it is better shut that <laughs> There we go. So I just smoked the bees entrance to get them to away so I can get my little block of wood on there. Well, I totally screwed that shot up. Sorry, but I was smoking the entrances and getting those little blocks on there. Now we're going to get this thing plugged in and get it warming up. It uh, heats to 240, I believe. 230. So that must be degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit because that's a lot harder than 45 degrees Fahrenheit right now, I guarantee you. So now we'll get our little cups ready. So when I do a bunch of hives, I'll set one of these on each hive. And as I use one, I'll pull it off and put it down on the farthest hive, let it cool put in the next one start it and uh, fill up the next cup that's been cooling for uh, the period of two hives that I've done this so there's our two cups filled up okay we're ready to go uh, it's up to 255 uh, it'll go up above 230 uh, a ways when you put this in there and dump it over it'll cool back down and when it gets back up to about 240 you're ready to go to your next hive so don't touch this it's very hot so this is how I uh, load it up you do it upside down put it on the edge of the hive don't touch this this is hot down here too I grab it right here kind of wiggle it down on there and I put it in the hole and flip it over I give it a good tap so those uh, crystals all fall down in the hot cup there you can see the temperatures coming down now so it's a uh, 195 185 Might be able to see some fumes coming out the front a little bit here No, I'm not seeing any it this hive is sealed up pretty good. Oh, there's some you can see coming out right there Little puffs of white it's funny, bees will come out and they'll, uh, they look like they got, uh, powder sugar coated. <laughs> so these bees flying around here, uh, foragers that are on the way back, wondering who shut the door. Okay, our temperature's coming back up now. So 220. So when it gets up to about 240, I'll uh, that cup will be empty, and then I can move on to the next one. This uh, inner cover right here is there because uh, I've removed it because I'm running this uh, top feeder. So uh, when I take the top feeder off and done with that, I'll uh, replace the inner cover. 
Okay, we're at 260. And uh, it's time to move it. So when you take this cup off, I grab it on the white part, wiggle it side to side, and drop it. So you see it's empty now, a little bit of a vapor's coming out. No need to twist it, it's easier if you just uh, give it a wiggle like this and then lift it straight up. So I let these cool uh, a while before I put more oxalic acid in it. Uh, if you put it in it when it's hot like that, it'll clump up and stick to the lid and won't fall down as easy when you're doing your uh, next treatment. So uh, I won't put any acid in it till I've been through another hive and it's had uh, that, that long to cool. So we're down to 185. 186 so it's starting to climb now uh, so like I said uh, I'll run uh, down the line with this with my three cups and I have six of those entrance covers so when I get done with six in a row I'll pull the entrance cover off the first one I did move it down to hive seven and just keep rotating them as I go because you don't want to pull that entrance cover off Right after you get done, you want those fumes to kind of work their way around in there because the bees will be fanning, spreading them around. And uh, you want them to light on the bees and on your frames and the comb and all that and get you a nice coating in there. You don't want to pull the cover off too quick and let the, any of those fumes go out. And this is the reason I'm switching to solid bottom boards uh, so I don't lose vapors the screen boards have inserts but you put the insert in they leak a lot of the vapors out around the edges I notice and so I'm going to all solid bottoms I think solid bottoms are built better too and they last longer those screen bottoms are pretty flimsy okay we're uh, 270 so we're done Yep, cup's empty, a little residual vapors there. So that's it. I'm going to unplug this and let it be cooling off. So yeah, this thing's a time saver. Uh, it's way faster than the little wand type. Those wands take a long time. Uh, I think there's other companies now besides Oxivape that make a similar uh, version of this. So these guys aren't the hot ticket anymore because they got some competition. Uh, I think this was like uh, almost $500 when I was like $4.99 when I bought this. So I think they come down quite a bit. Uh, the other brands, I don't know about Oxivape's prices, but uh, I'll put a link to this and uh, the other stuff I use as well, the, the oxalic acid I use. Okay, it's been a few minutes. Let's go ahead and get these off of here. Yeah, so when you when you release the bees, uh, they are pissed off. Just a uh, Fair warning there, too. <laughs> oh. It's funny when you take this off, it's like mass out everything. So your sense of smell, there's nothing to smell. And as soon as you take it off, it's like you're hit with all, all the natural smells. It's kind of overpowering. It's like, what is that? Oh, that's normal. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, 
Better get my Olivia Newton John uh, headband back on. Uh, don't want to disrespect her. So uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, so you can see. So I did uh, 28 uh, hives last night. Uh, 27 because of hive 99, formerly known as uh, hive 13, is not there anymore. But uh, yeah, we got that done last night. So you want to do it later in the evening so the majority of your bees are in the hive so you get as much acid on a vapor on all your bees that you can but it's a it's a balance between starting late enough and not working into the dark uh, so you know you got to kind of gauge that uh, or you just do it whenever you can and uh, just be sure you do your your regimen of your uh, at least three treatments so uh, a lot of people i hear do four and five uh, last year High 15, I did three treatments, seven days apart. So theoretically should have got them all right. Uh, I did some random mite checks with my little mite check shaker alcohol cup and uh, it was still high after it had the three treatments. So uh, I hit it uh, three more times. So, and it did okay this year. I got honey off a, a high 15. So yeah, it may have not done well this year if I wouldn't have caught that. So. Uh, later on this uh, this season, I will try to do some spot mite checks and uh, to uh, you know randomly check and see, make sure I don't have a problem, uh, rather than do every single hive. But uh, basically, that's it. So I'm going to end this here, and I'm going to run up there and see uh, if my little state fair bees survived the the swarm NATO massacre. Oh my God, poor poor things. So. Uh, I don't know. I might do a video on that. I don't know. It's too depressing. <laughs> Stupid bees. Anyway, this time of year beekeeping, it's it's a challenge. It's different. Uh, it's not like springtime when everything's great. Nectar's flowing. You can do anything you want. You know, you can split hives. You can uh, make three frame splits. You can go crazy because uh, the nectar's flowing. Resources are plenty. Bees don't mess with each other. It's a good time. Fall is when you will be tested. That's when uh, you'll see new beekeepers uh, will have all their equipment for sale because they're tired of it. <laughs> their bees are gone or whatever. So you got to get through fall. Fall is tough, uh, which it's not even fall yet. It's late summer. But yeah, getting into the fall. Uh, if we had a fall flow, it would be a little different. But man, we got, we got nothing. So anyway, I will shut up. You're welcome. That's the end of it, and uh, we'll catch you on the next beekeeping video. Y'all take care.